eye disease for years. And the pain in the back of your eye is forcing bad words from your mouth. Or the bags under your eyes are looking more like purses. It's not too late for another treatment option for thyroid eye disease, also known as TED. To learn more, visit treatted.com. That's treat, T-E-D.com. I knew I'd destroy the legacy somehow. <laughs> Tomorrow on E.T., James Corden after his final Late Late Show ever. Plus, cheers! From Melissa McCarthy to Zendaya, E.T. is center stage with the stars at CinemaCon, including Transformer stars Anthony Ramos and Dominique Fishbeck. Happening now. After last night's shooting here at Market Square, people are still turning up during the day, but do people feel safe coming at night? And it could take weeks, if not months, to buy real estate, but we're going to tell you one company that says they can do it in a day. They take cryptocurrency. Next. And I'll be back live for my final Fiesta Metal giveaway of the season, along with updated timing to tomorrow's storm chances and your parade forecasts in just a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. A shooting in crowded Market Square putting an end to Fiesta festivities there last night, but San Antonio police say that it was an isolated incident, not a bigger event. Our Camelia Juarez shows us how onlookers kept their cool amid the chaos. Around 1030 last night, the dancing at Market Square was interrupted by a single gunshot. A 25 year old man was struck in the chest and rushed to Bamsi. Food vendor Felipe Teniente, who saw the shooting, says the crowd stayed calm. We were just telling them to walk, don't run. It was one shooting, there was not multiple shooting. Teniente says there are always officers near his stand. They were quick, quick response. There was a lot of police presence. San Antonio police say an argument escalated into the shooting behind the DJ stage. Verbal altercation, somebody bumps somebody, uh, a fight breaks out, and then somebody pulls out a weapon. The alleged shooter has not been arrested. Police say the suspect was wearing a black hoodie. Now San Antonio police are reminding people that weapons are prohibited from any and all Fiesta events. Despite seeing viral video of the shooting, people say they feel safe because there is a heavy police presence. And other people say they feel like Market Square and La Villita becomes dangerous at night when people are more intoxicated. And then after it finished, we're out of here. You know, because that's when it starts getting crazy and people are more drunk. San Antonio police suggest that if you're going to come out tonight, be sure to be aware of your surroundings. Keep track of your friends. And if you see something, say something. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. A two year old, the latest child shot in a home with a gun that wasn't properly secured. San Antonio police say the child was struck in the head after a gun hit the floor and then went off. It happened about three this morning on Kent's Store Street near South Ellison on the west side. We're told the boy's parents rushed him to the hospital. At last check, the child was in critical condition. Police say, according to family members, the gun laying on top of a television when the little boy knocked it down, it fell and then fired. A three year old was also in the home at the time of the shooting, but they were not hurt. Police are investigating this incident. Bear County Sheriff's deputies looking for someone who drove by a home with guns firing last night. That drive by shooting happening in the 1700 block of Spanish Wells near Petrenko Road at around 1230 a.m. The vehicle was hit during the shooting. Deputies say a surveillance camera captured the image, this image of the suspect's vehicle. It's a silver Dodge Charger. Anyone with information about this car or the suspect involved in the shooting is being asked to call the Bear County Sheriff's Office. The phone number 210-335-6000. In addition to checking out the prices at the pump, people are being told to keep an eye out for skimmers as well. This after one is found at a gas station on the north side. Hollywood Park Police say a skimmer found attached to a pump number 15 to be specific at the Circle K convenience store at Loop 1604 and Voight Drive near Stone Oak Parkway. The department advising anyone who uses this particular gas pump in the last 24 hours Check your credit card activity. In fact, they're strongly urging you to deactivate that card. Now, before you pump gas, police say check it out for glue residue, the card payer anyway, spray paint, scratches, or marks that tools would make. These could be signs of a skimmer in place. Now, more about your money, or rather, your Bitcoin, specifically 
when you buy your house or some property. It may take weeks or even months. Well, now there's a way to do the deal in a day. 12 Near Sides Marilyn Moore shows us how real estate is going crypto. This acre and a half of dirt and wildflowers is prime real estate. On the corridor between San Antonio and Austin. All yours for two and a half million dollars or... Or Bitcoin or a <laughs> cryptocurrency. That's 86 Bitcoin. Commercial real estate agent Tom Verducci right says and going crypto broadens his buying pool. I thought it was a great opportunity to open it up to the world on another platform because there's cryptocurrency owners throughout the world and a lot of them have done very well for themselves. He listed the property here on myelisting.com. It's an Austin-based startup offering the first real estate marketplace that takes Bitcoin or Ethereum. It's kind of like there's a new flavor of ice cream and no one's tried it yet. And unlike plain vanilla transactions, CEO Caleb Richter says these deals can be done in a day. That's because the title is checked and the seller signs his part of the contract before the property is even listed. Then once the buyer checks out, the closing takes place over Zoom. The value of cryptocurrency is constantly changing. So the buyer then has 15 minutes to send his cryptocurrency to Coinbase and the exchange forwards the good old US dollars finishing the sale. The goal is someone in Japan or Lebanon or Australia can be on their couch and they're like, I want to buy a home in Miami right now. Boom, click. Richter sees cryptocurrency as a global language, but says there will still be a need for old fashioned bank loans. I don't think it will replace, but it's just giving another way to trade properties. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. We are eight days into San Antonio's biggest party of 2023, Fiesta in full swing, and so is Metal Mania. Yeah, it's the biggest accessory of the season, and there's one guy who got some of the most coveted medals this year, and he's handing them out, Adam Kasky at Legacy Park, where the line's been forming for more than an hour now. A great day for this giveaway, Adam. It's a fantastic day for the giveaway. We're at Legacy Park. Everybody's having fun. I'm with the wonderful crew with As You Are and all of our friends that joined us here. I do have to say we are out of wristbands for now, so we have met our limit for the medals, but the fun goes on. <laughs> And one thing I love is that the Frost Tower casts a beautiful shadow right over Legacy Park. So it feels fantastic. But let's like take a look at temperatures across our area. Weather watchers, Del Rio right now at 88 degrees. We're 84 in Panna Maria. And then you get to Lavernia, it's 82. Bernie at 83. So it's, it's warm out, but not bad, especially considering averages and this time of year, it's pretty typical. So, and also we have the lack of humidity in the air, which is nice. Okay, coming up in a little bit, we need to update you on our next round of thunderstorms, which is on the way tomorrow. We're going to have more fun here, but we're going to time out our next round of storms and talk about the primary threats with those. And of course, get into the details for the Battle of Flowers and Flambeau Parade forecast. We'll see you in a bit. Thank you, Adam. And speaking of Battle of Flowers, final preps are underway for tomorrow's parade. If you still want to experience the annual Fiesta event with us, you can become a KSAT Insider for free. There's still time, and you'll be able to join us at tomorrow's KSAT Watch Party. Get your tickets, watch the parade from above in the grandstands, enjoy tacos from Las Palapas, and access to private restrooms. Plus, you get to hang out with the KSAT crew. Just scan the QR code on your screen right now. It's going to take you directly to our KSAT Fiesta page. Sign up to be a KSAT Insider for free. Buy your tickets to tomorrow's KSAT Watch Party. Hope to see you there. Across America, four escaped inmates in Mississippi on the run, but now one of them is dead. Law enforcement says that they believe that Dylan Arrington was the inmate cornered inside a home who got into a shootout with officers. During that gunfight, the home caught fire. Police say that Arrington continued shooting at officers as the flames were spreading. Firefighters say they recovered a body. After pulling it out of the fire, Arrington had been on the run since he and three other detainees escaped from the Raymond jail on Saturday night. The white woman who accused black teenager Emmett Till of whistling at her in the segregated South of 1955 has died. A coroner's office in Louisiana confirmed 88 year old Carolyn Bryant Donham died on Tuesday. 14 year old Till from Chicago was visiting family in Mississippi in 1955 when he allegedly whistled at Bryant. He was beaten, shot to death 
and his body thrown into a river. It said his death and the open casket that his mom allowed to be shown helped drive the civil rights movement. Philadelphia police searching for the people who drugged some grape juice and it sent five students to the hospital. School district officials say that 11 teenage students drank this tainted grape juice that was laced with an opioid just before lunchtime yesterday in Philadelphia. School officials believe two students brought the drug in, known on the street as Wonk. They shared it with their classmates. All of those students, though, are expected to recover. The federal prosecutors in Massachusetts court today arguing that the accused leaker of classified documents is, quote, a serious flight risk, end quote. The Justice Department wants 21 year old Jack Teixeira, a member of Air National Guard, to remain behind bars until his trial starts. They're trying to persuade a judge that he could be targeted and recruited by foreign adversaries if released from custody. Attorneys for Teixeira asking the judge to release him on the least restrictive conditions and pushing back, saying the government's concerns don't have any basis. Teixeira accused of accessing classified documents and uploading them to social media. The fallout of the leak has led the Air Force to suspend two leaders from Teixeira's unit. Millions of people from Texas to Florida saw severe storms overnight that brought big hail, big winds, and a lot of rain. Meantime, central states are watching melting snow push the Mississippi River even further over its banks. Laura Aguirre with a string of severe weather hitting close to home this spring. We went through two hurricanes last year, and this does not compare to either one of them, maybe even both put together. Hail as large as softballs from the Florida panhandle over to southern Texas. Many are assessing damage from Wednesday's wind-driven hail that battered property like cannonballs. We lost half of our, um, the top to our uh, lanai and our gutters on both sides. And I have some windows broken in the back and hail damage to my car. One Florida middle school's courtyard buried in hail, looking more like a blanket of snow. This bull in Texas trying to escape the onslaught. His owner says he made it to safety. This is insane. The Storm Prediction Center is forecasting large hail, heavy rain, strong winds, and possible tornadoes for the same region of southern Texas through most of Florida into Thursday evening. In the Midwest, pumps along the rising Mississippi River are working around the clock. Melting snow runoff has pushed the river over its banks and into towns from Wisconsin to Minnesota for days. Like most small towns, we've uh, managed to do all of the sandbagging and so forth with volunteer help. All of the gates along Dubuque, Iowa's massive flood wall are now closed. The river is expected to crest there Saturday, while many other towns may not see relief until next week. We have weathered the storm. Um, you know, we'll wait for the water to see and see what kind of damage we have. I'm Laura Aguirre reporting. Check out Trans Guide right now. This is 410 at Fredericksburg. Pretty busy in both directions. Coming up, students from a local middle school debuting their parade float at the King William Fair this weekend. How the message they're sharing with San Antonio signifies their 100-year anniversary. I'm Myra Arthur in the newsroom, and here's what's coming up today on the news at 6 o'clock. A dispute near a northwest side neighborhood ends with a military veteran facing felony charges. But as KSAT investigates discovered, that was only the beginning of this story. Body camera footage recorded by a sheriff's deputy revealed a long list of issues with the case, even before the man was taken to jail. We're going to have kidnapping? What? And we are going to have criminal mischief for the garage door. Okay? She was driving my vehicle. So that's what the charges are going to be. Tonight at 6, we examine the fallout and how it took months for prosecutors to finally reject these cases. Plus, more than two years after his brave battle with cancer, the legacy of Judson High School student and football player Bryce Wisdom lives on. What has now been named in his honor? And the Witte Museum is on a new mission to tell the lesser known histories that shaped Texas into what it is today. We'll take a look at the plans they have in tonight's History Untold. All that and more today on the News at Six.
Thank you, Myra. Taking a live look outside right now, 83 degrees. Look at that blue sky. Perfect day. Perfect parade watching weather. Will it hang around for the actual parades? I think it'll hang around. Okay. Yeah, we need it to because students are putting their finishing touches on their entry in this year's King William Parade. Sixth, seventh, and eighth graders building and decorating this float and other floats with all kinds of elements, keeping in line with this year's theme, a story about Fiesta. Teachers helping the children with the parade project say that everyone should immediately see the kids' love for education. The float's going to be featured uh, a blast from the past. Our current students, 6th through 8th grade, are building it um, with the theme of the story of Fiesta and how we have carried on the Fiesta traditions in our campus over all of these years. The school's float also celebrating 100 years for the school. The King William Parade is on Saturday. If you can't make it out there, KSAT's got you covered. We're going to be live streaming the excitement on KSAT.com and on KSAT Plus. It all begins at 9 a.m. And right now, yes. The weather is cooperating for tonight's many Fiesta events, especially for our Adam Kasky. Yeah, he's at Legacy Park near downtown. It's in downtown for the last chance to get your hands on the Thermometer Thursday weather medal. Adam is at the park live for the free medal giveaway. Adam. Yes, and we are all the all the medals that we have today are sought for and they're sought after and people have the wristbands so they're already uh, basically given away and um, unfortunately we don't have any left this is our last thermometer thursday medal giveaway for this year we're at legacy park and as you are puts on a great party i'm gonna move around as you are folks don't worry i'm gonna move around we'll get you in the shot they put on such a <laughs> now he moves that way we put on such a such a great party as you are is a uh, pediatric autism evaluations and April's Autism Awareness Month and of course it's Fiesta as well so we're putting them together and throwing a party to celebrate both we've got our fun people we've got some long long games there we got the DJ rocking it in the back and we even have a few uh, snacks here this event goes till seven o'clock all right let's take a look at temperatures and get into the forecast before we show you some more fun around here homemade thermometer Reading 82 degrees. Airport officially, 82 degrees. No coincidence if you ask me. We're up to 91 in Catula, but here's the key. Look at the dew points. Dew points are down into the 50s and 40s. That's why it feels so heavenly out here, especially underneath the shade of Frost Tower. It just perfectly shades Legacy Park here. All right, let's go to this evening's forecast full screen. Take this in. Beautiful this evening, just fine. A clear sky, temperatures falling through the 70s, then down into the 60s. And overall, nothing to really worry about or plan around this evening or tonight or even tomorrow morning. So let's talk about it all in general here, starting with tomorrow morning. Battle of Flowers Parade kicks off at 9.30. It's gonna be in the 60s to start, 66 degrees at 9 a.m. And then by noon, we're up to 79. Some low clouds early, then turning really sunny into the afternoon. And really an increase in the humidity, you're gonna notice that. Now notice the end of the 12 hour forecast. Those storm chances start ramping up tomorrow, late afternoon and early evening by five o'clock at 40%. But we get to 6 p.m. and those chances are up to 60%. By 8 p.m., 70%. We're expecting widespread numerous showers and thunderstorms and even potentially severe storms. So let's look at our future cast. This is one of our latest high resolution model runs. And first part of the day, just fine. 0% chance of rain through the early afternoon. You don't have to worry about anything for Battle of Flowers. It's tomorrow evening, outdoor events. If you have the tents set up, you want to secure everything, break down the tents even, the ones that can blow away quickly. Nios is likely to get uh, get hit tomorrow evening by some thunderstorms. Notice that time frame, six o'clock, starting to blow into San Antonio. Midnight. Primary threat: large hail, and then some straight line wind gusts, 60 to 70 miles per hour. Now behind this front, it's going to change everything for Saturday. Temperatures will drop, but the wind is going. To I can't make him the general manager. We have one that's tenured. <laughs> tenured, tenured. <laughs> but but uh, if Will uh, can write those checks, I might consider it. <laughs>
Jerry Jones is talking about his unsung hero, Will McClay, in Big Board Sports. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The 2023 NFL Draft is finally here, kicking off tonight for the first round in Kansas City. The Carolina Panthers will select first overall, and the Dallas Cowboys will follow them 25 spots later at 26. Mock drafts are all over the place, suggesting the boys will go with a tight end first, while others say running back or right guard. The general consensus, though, seems to be a tight end as they look for their very own Travis Kelsey. When it comes to the NFL Draft, we all see Jerry, Steven, and Coach McCarthy sitting front and center, but the most important guy during the draft is Will McClay, the Cowboys Vice President of Player Personnel. I don't want anybody to know about Will. <laughs> I'm teasing, <laughs> but I'm not teasing. But he's very unique and he has a he has great people skills. And I mean they work for Will and those scouts and that's a management job with those scouts out on the road. And I think we are up over 250000 a player that we draft on scouting expenses. So Will's got a big job. Intrigue is overflowing the cup as to just what the te Houston Texans plan to do with the second overall pick tonight. Will they draft the quarterback, go defense first, or trade out of the two spot? We just don't know. D'Amico Ryans was asked, does he feel pressure with all the excitement ahead of the draft now that he's the head coach? I don't feel any pressure. All right, because I know I'm surrounding myself with the right people, and I know we can get the job done. All right, and I know Houston is hungry for a winner. Trust me, I, I'm just as hungry, you know, to create a winner here for this organization, for this city. You know, it, it means a lot to me, and I want to be able to bring that to Houston. So it's it's no pressure. It's just, it just reminds me just continue to put your head down and go to work with the right purpose. NFL draft starts at 7 tonight with the first round right here in case at 12 and rounds 2 and 3 are tomorrow night at 6. We'll be right back after the break. Thanks so much for watching the News at 5 with us. World News is up next. We'll see you back here at 6 o'clock.